Yo, Philip, it's your boy, Coach Beast Mode. When are you going to get me on the Positive Filter podcast? I want to make sure your fans know how to stay motivated, stay hungry, and live like a beast. Positive Filter with your host, Philip Wilkerson, a podcast that focuses on friends, family, health, and career with a little self-help around the way. Please join me in this journey for self-improvement, and I hope that what I have to share will make you a better person, thus making the world a better place. Positive Filter. And Coach Beast Mode coming to you live from CrossFit Annandale. Uh, we're doing a live podcast kind of thing, collaboration. Um, you know, this was a, a big, big new idea for us, um, something that we really look forward to. When I started this podcast a long time ago, a big, big motivator was my friend Sam Nay, a.k.a. hashtag Coach Beast Mode. What's up, everyone? I'm glad to be on the episode or on the uh, the podcast. I've been waiting a long time for Philip to ask me, so I just volunteered. <laughs> yeah, he voluntold me. <laughs> but um, I had to have Sam Nay on the podcast because one thing is uh, I hesitated to even start this podcast, and if it wasn't for what we call the positive trolling of Sam Nang, <laughs> pushing me and pushing me and pushing me to start a podcast it wouldn't be here today so i'll give him a big big shout out for that and so we decided to do an episode on the things that are big hobbies of ours uh, mine being powerlifting which i need to get back into and sam name doing bodybuilding yeah absolutely we thought this was going to be a great idea where we do a little collaboration on our podcast and our youtube so we're killing what two stones with one bird two That's birds it. with one stone you know whatever. <laughs> 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 but anyway, I'm really excited about this episode. So we're also going to do uh, a follow-up uh, on my YouTube channel uh, with a training episode where we're going to do like training uh, styles because obviously Philip is a great power lifter and I am more into the bodybuilding hypertrophy kind of type of training right. and we've been kind of synergizing and bouncing off ideas and just kind of sharing our ideas about life you know parenting uh, business and training at the same time so we thought this was going to be a great uh, collaboration idea for everyone yeah I mean and it's funny because uh, both of us were introduced or well, not introduced Sam Nang's been in the fitness realm way longer years since, uh, since being, high school since high school and you know I did um, athletics in high school ran track and football but then I had a long long gap in my fitness and I was reintroduced to fitness through CrossFit um, and it was at CrossFit where I was introduced to Sam Nang and it's through CrossFit that I was introduced to powerlifting which um, I really enjoyed the CrossFit aspect but when it came down to like really doing gymnastics and <laughs> body weight exercises and, and rowing and running that wasn't my cup of tea and the thing that really I gravitated to was lifting heavy stuff um, and so I found powerlifting through CrossFit so I've never you know when people talk about being haters of CrossFit I've never been a hater of CrossFit because if it wasn't for CrossFit I wouldn't be introduced to something I'm passionate about which was powerlifting so I can't be a CrossFit hater and it was through CrossFit that I met my good friends such as Sam Nang and um, the Hardmans who actually own the gym that we're doing yeah. this podcast at. So. Yeah, we definitely got to plug uh, CrossFit Annandale for bringing a great community and a uh, great friendship out here. Uh, I also found my fiance here at the gym too. So when you once you start building like a community and helping build a community, you start to attract people that are like minded as you as uh, as also. Um, and yes, uh, CrossFitting was the thing that kind of brought me and Philip together. Uh, but obviously, we all love weight training. That's where my preference is that's why I lean towards more uh, powerlifting and bodybuilding we actually a uh, funny story Philip and I were getting really close uh, while we were CrossFit we were supposed to compete in our first uh, CrossFit competition he ended up getting injured and yeah. uh, so that's where he went into the route of uh, doing more powerlifting I went into more weightlifting like the Olympic weightlifting during that time yeah. so now we're bringing our heads together and we're excited to bring you this episode yeah it was it was and it was through um, that injury I hurt my wrist 
that when I had nothing, I couldn't do anything during that wrist injury but squat. And so yeah. I, for like six months, everyone was doing all these like kettlebell swings and gymnastics, and the only thing I could do was squat. So I'd, I'd try to do different variations of squat. I would squat to a box, or I would squat with uh, different types of bars. Like a camber bar. I camber was bar. And I was just, it was like literally, I was like, Philip, what are you going to do today? I was going to squat. Yeah. And so that kind of, when I wanted to come back to lifting, I was like, okay, like, I'm not really, you know, my wrist limits me from doing lots of gymnastics. It doesn't feel good, but I could actually deadlift because you don't move your wrist. Your wrist is locked. I could squat because I could hold the bar yeah. and I can bench press. So, you know, it was taking a bad situation of an injury and seeing what I was able to do. And through that, like I said, I found a passion. I was like, okay, I like going to powerlifting meets. Yeah. Um, I, I like the training style. For me, um, People love the variety of CrossFit. They love uh, was it cross was it cross modal domains? What's you know what's it? Uh, you, we know that you know, we, I can't remember. We, we took the test. Was it, like was, it while, it, was it was it was it high intensity yeah. functional movements across oh, varied domains? Very mo yeah, modern domains, something like that. Well, the point is, I don't like that. I don't like variety. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I liked I liked the, the simplicity of doing the three main lifts: uh, deadlift bench and squat and I knew what to practice I knew how to train it um, while there is accessory movements um, things that you could do to help the deadlift squat and bench when a lot of people do powerlifting when they say well, I want to get better in powerlifting it's very simple just do squat bench and deadlift yeah. squat bench and deadlift and so for me I found that simplicity um, very very uh, manageable and I found I don't like going into the gym and you know the water today and not know what it is and it's a bunch of crazy stuff. Yeah. I liked I like knowing that hey today I'm doing three by five and at this weight and and, and you know I like the structure of the powerlifting and that's what gravitated me to a powerlifting. Yeah, I, I think CrossFit is a great beginners kind of program for everybody to kind of touch base on like what you want to be good at. You know, whether it be weightlifting, powerlifting. They don't really do a lot of bodybuilding in CrossFit, but what my uh, kind of vision is is kind of bring a little bit more hypertrophy work into uh, powerlifting, weightlifting because there's been a benefit, a lot of benefits that I've been testing out the theories. Uh, and using the techniques that I've learned in bodybuilding to bring back to weightlifting and in powerlifting. Obviously, a lot of these weight training programs are very synergistic to each other, mm -hmm. uh, but you do got to put things on a back burner when you are trying to uh, accelerate uh, or be better at one type of programming, whether it be uh, powerlifting or you know bodybuilding. Uh, all the others, um, you know, like. Uh, expertise or like CrossFit has to be on a back burner and mm -hmm. Philip and I are both coaches too so using the philosophies that we have and uh, you know same what we use in training we also use in life as well right 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 and I mean uh, I think you know the thing you touched upon was the synergy um, I think you told me you referred to it, it was what's called power building yeah where you use hypertrophic movements to get stronger um, my coach which I need to get back with Chris Riley was a big component of doing the main lifts and then using some hypertrophy you know you, you, you finish workouts but curls you know like I was like yeah, I'll be doing yeah. curls so you said bigger biceps you just yeah, I was like what's the point of this it looks cool he said yeah it looks cool but also it might help with something else so you know I, I do it helps find, your <laughs> ego that's what it does it helps your ego and you help you lift more okay yeah but <laughs> but you said another thing that you said was that uh, you, you transfer the the mindset of lifting weights into other parts of your life um, one of the things which I, you know, practice what I preach, I need to put myself out there on blast, was one of the things when I was training for a competition for powerlifting was consistency. Yeah. Because I had a goal set in mind um, that I wanted to do well at a powerlifting meet, so I had to be consistent with my training. Now, um, I'm not so consistent because I don't have an actual tangible powerlifting meet, mm -hmm. so I need to transfer that same mindset of consistency, which is funny because on the flip side, in things now, on my podcast or my Ill Phil Awards, I have transported that consistency of constant content. Uh, you know, mail and Ill Phil Awards every Monday. Mm -hmm. um, regiment, you know, regimented things. And I, I need to get myself, you know, into the mindset that I need to get consistent with my working out. Yeah, absolutely, man. I think uh, one of the big things that people miss in their life uh, is is weight training, or not weight training, just physical health. 
uh, that accelerates your life so much. It fuels it. That, that's what I believe. And you know, I always preach health. You know, whether it be fitness, it doesn't matter what type of programming you do. As long as you get your body moving and the blood flowing a little bit, right? It just creates uh, just more opportunities for you to have more like real energy, not like the caffeine type of energy where you're jittery and just nervous all the time. The type of real physical energy that you need to be productive you know have the clear mind make clear decisions mm -hmm. and you know health is one of the biggest factors that you know I try to preach and you know obviously Philip has started to kind of get influence from uh, you know my philosophies and mentalities on like training well I mean and I, yeah I definitely use you as a consistency. motivation consistency um, yeah. and one of the things I do admire about Sam Nang is that he has consistent work ethic and that with the iron sharpens iron mindset is that, you know, I feed off of that. Like, as I said earlier, this podcast was a big, big motivator for me to be consistent with this is because this man will troll me. He would, he would say, he would, he would, he wouldn't even address me as Philip on social media. He would say, Hey, I can't wait for the positive filter to come out. And I was like, Oh man, if I don't, if I don't come out with this positive filter, <laughs> like people are gonna think I'm like, li like he's gonna either think Sam Nang is a crazy man that keeps on referring to his friend as positive filter, yeah. or think that I'm, well, you know, not walking the walk. Um, bringing it back, I don't have a powerlifting meet, right? And I, I, you know, I need to tangibly find a powerlifting meet, and maybe that will help me set some goals because I like when I have a meet, I attack it, and yeah. that helps me. That helps me give you structure. Now, you do it naturally because you have this natural mindset of staying healthy. But do you also find it easier or m like you up the intensity of your working out when you have a goal, like maybe that bodybuilding competition yeah. that you had? Yeah, yeah, and uh, what training with my mindset, it, I am training year round, like there is no like off period, but uh, you know, with like training philosophies, I understand like programming a lot more. So there is periodization where like I will take like I go pretty intense, heavy on like powerlifting for like three months, okay. and then put hypertrophy in the back burner, or I will go a little bit more uh, for the next three months. I go more hypertrophy type work than powerlifting, and then I'll ease off. And the real end goal is, uh, and I always practice or preach this: it's adherence. It's like, can you consistently do this for your whole life? Right. You know. If you're going so hard two, three years of like CrossFit or powerlifting and you get beat up and you're injured, yeah. that's what you don't want, right? You want to be uh, healthy in your head at the same time. You right. know, a lot of people get injured and that really derails their yeah. uh, performances. So that's where like talking to coaches, thinking like understanding programming, that's how it benefits like your training and like your mental health. Well, I mean, I mean, that's really. You actually nailed it. I, I went really hard with my powerlifting, um, and I'm recently I'm recovering from uh, a neck injury right now, and that me that mindset of being derailed is actually what's going on right yeah. now. Yeah. So having this podcast and talking about it's going to get me motivated. Like maybe I need to, if it's not a powerlifting meet, start real slow. Yeah. I think the hardest thing for me is I'm crushing weights and my deadlift. You know, it was in the 500s, right? I love it. Yeah. And I had to be humble and start at 315 over again, or even less, maybe less than 315. Yeah. And it sucks because I know where I used to be in my head. Mm -hmm. And that's probably one of the most frustrating things about dealing with injury. Um, but at the same time, I need to recognize that I can't sustain lifting over 500 all the time. Yeah. Because what if I have a jacked up back and I can't pick up my son? Yeah. So what kind of health do I really want to have? Do I want to have the health where I, I'm only lifting heavy to get medals? Or do I want to have the kind of health where I'm picking up my son when I'm 80 years old? Yeah. And I'm, I'm still working through that. That this is That's what uh, the Positive Filter podcast is about, is that while I'm trying to give people advice, I'm trying to let you know that I'm still processing this stuff. I don't have all the answers. And so, you know, we're going to work out today. Um, most likely, you know, we're going to put on some weights on the bar and I'm going to have to put the weight. Not too crazy, on. you know. What I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> I haven't been lifting as crazy, like heavy as As I said, yeah. You know? <laughs> and I have to say that he hasn't been lifting crazy heavy and I need to calm myself down. But build, look at the old end of goal. We're going to get a good workout in. We're going to have some camaraderie. Yeah. We're going to spend time together. We're going to lift in the gym. But. 
you know, I gotta look at the, old, the yeah. overall goal of, and, of lifetime fitness. Yeah, and one thing I want to tell about like my viewers on YouTube and on the podcast is sometimes people mistake what fitness is with what health is, right? Okay. That's so good one. fitness, right, is being to being able to pull 500 pounds. Uh, being able to pull 500 pounds, you know, being able to run, um, you know, a mile under six minutes, right? But that doesn't mean you're healthy. If you're so obsessed about that where like, you give up everything and it alters like your mentality, your mood, that doesn't mean you're healthy. It means you're fit in that one arena. But yeah. health is being able to make you know, conscious good decisions and, you know, being to include physical fitness in your whole life throughout your whole lifespan. That's really the end goal is it's not, it's not, you know, run that five minute mile, you know, and then burn out and then quit running, right? All together. You don't want to do that. You want that right. consistency throughout. And yeah. that's the difference between, I think, fitness and health. And a lot of people need to realize that too. I think, and I think that needs a recharge. I think we're, I'm going to probably consult with Sam Nang or talk. I think I'm going to need to get that mindset back is maybe I won't do a powerlifting meet this year. Maybe that's a secondary goal. Yeah. Um, maybe the main goal this year is not to get fit. Not to break your back. <laughs> yeah, to break your back. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm too old for that. <laughs> but maybe my goal would be to health, not fit. Yeah. Well, you know what I meant. Like Maybe a good balance of both, right? Yeah, in your definition. Yeah. Not break your back. And don't worry. I mean, Philip, I was there when he when he had his injury, and I talked to him through it. <laughs> as yeah, much as yeah man, I was in my feelings. <laughs> I get. I mean, if you don't know me, I'm a pretty emotional guy, and I get in my feelings a lot. <laughs> so <laughs> I was definitely in my feelings when I was only using a Cambridge bar <laughs> every day. That was not fun He at was still all. squatting over, like, 400 pounds and still feeling bad about himself. You know? like, <laughs> Philip, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know how that works. Maggie told me that's crazy. Like, how do you? live heavy and not satisfied and I think that's another obtainment about the overall mindset of people chasing yeah. goals and sometimes it's really really good to have goals that are obtainable right and you know I hit this mark I hit this mark but you you need to enjoy the journey of that of, of yeah. the health the health journey not the fitness journey the health journey because there's always gonna be someone stronger than you always there's always like you go to I went to a powerlifting meet Nationals. I went to Nationals. I was so happy. There. Yeah, he was. I was so happy. I, he was actually at two of my powerlifting meets. And so, so Sam Nang has been experiencing to the two anxiety-provoking parts of my life. He had even he even had to text Maggie. He was like, "How do you deal with this guy when he deals with this nervousness?" And I, she was like, "I don't know. I just do." Because he's seen both of us. I think the second time when we were at the the powerlifting meet in Tyson's, I was a lot better than the first time. You're nervous uh, <laughs> making weight, you're nervous driving, so it's like... <laughs> yeah, well the point is, uh, what was my point? It was about going to those raw national meets, and I was like, man, I'm killing it, I'm doing pretty good, and you get there, and you're like, uh, welcome to the ocean. You're a bit, you're, you may have been a, a big fish in a little pond, yeah. but now you're swimming with sharks, and I've seen the strongest people in the United States, and it's just like, Oh my goodness. <laughs> and so with that mindset, I didn't leave those national meets beat myself saying yeah, I'm can't. not strong. I said, wow, that's really fun to see where people can get to. Maybe yeah. I can get there someday. Maybe I won't. But I need to enjoy the journey of lifting, enjoy the process of trying to get better. Um, because at the end of the day, there's always going to be someone stronger than you. There's, you know, you lift, you lift 600 pounds, you look around, and there's some guy on YouTube that will drop a video on YouTube of him squatting like 700 yeah. uh, with just like knee wraps or something. And you're like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> where do these people come yeah, you, from? Yeah, that's the comparison paradigm, you know. You just got to get away from that. It's really just like what you said. Somebody's always gonna be bigger, stronger, faster than you, unless you know you're on top of your 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 sport. But you know we're all regular day people. We're all trying to do you know it's right. we're weekend warriors and trying to make this uh, you know our full time hobby. At the end of the day, I mean eventually I'm gonna make this a full time hobby. Right. That should be my end time my end time or end time goal uh, for what I do. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So I mean we have about let's you know wrap it up a little soon. Is there any Let's do, I mean, obviously we got to plug ourselves, you know, yeah. do, some, do some plugs, <laughs> plugs, the plug, but like, what would be, um, before we do our plugs, what would be some, Oh, do you, you know, want to talk about our programming? Eh, or, I mean, we'll talk about it in a second time. I mean, yeah. we got, we got to a good point in the podcast, but, um, what would be, let's end with, if you can get one gem today on this podcast, 
for someone to take away from the lifting, powerlifting, whatever, we're talking about the fitness part. I'll give mine after yours, but what is one gem you want to leave the listeners with today? One gem for like health and fitness and yeah. uh, just being self-improvement? Yeah. I think uh, mine is you got to be a constant learner, uh, you know, a student of the game. You cannot ever go in, like, and I see this way too many when like CrossFit athletes come into the gym where they think they're listening, but they're not really listening, where like they listen to you know, some parts that sound good and it's easy. Yeah. You gotta listen to every everything, right? Yeah. Every you know, if you're an athlete, you're a student, you gotta just absorb as much as you can. And I, I read this thing, it's called the ten percent rule. I just wanna yeah. uh if I find it astonishing, it's like, you know, if you listen to like an audio program or a class, you're only gonna get ten percent of what yeah. that uh, lecture or program is gonna, um, you know, give out, and that's up to you to make sure uh, you get the re the rest. So that's why you gotta like ten times your goal. You know, if you want to see the results, you gotta make those goals really big and make uh, learning a like a habit, a specific habit. You don't go in there and just do it. Uh, see too many athletes come in and just kind of, uh, you know, don't want to be at the gym, don't want to be, be there, be consistent, and be willing to learn and apply it as fast as you can, right? The faster you could do it, the better athlete, and then you can apply that outside of the gym as well, like into uh, business and life and relationship. That's a pretty heavy gym. I would say, and just touch upon that, I'm not gonna go expand it, but I think, my gym for fitness, uh, and it does translate beyond this, is I believe that people are the greatest resource. No, there's books, yeah. and I think people should read, um, there's the internet, but for me, um, by absorbing from other people the greatest, the best part of this whole fitness journey and cr getting introduced to CrossFit and having my coach, Chris Riley, was people. I think my emotional connection to people has been the greatest. I've learned from watching other people. And when you and, and when you said the weekend warriors, one of the best things I've seen is I've seen everyday normal people do things that I want to do. Yeah. And so I think if anyone is out there questioning getting started with fitness and things like that, um, join a gym. It doesn't have to be a CrossFit gym, um, but join any gym where you're not completely by yourself because yeah. I think one of the hardest things for people to get started is doing it completely by yourself yeah. um, CrossFit I believe is a great avenue because there's classes and there's other people um, but if CrossFit's not your thing a yoga class or uh, I don't know shoot a Zumba class a Zumba you know, class it's like but nothing. use but use people as that resource use people to draw their energy use people to help you get to your fitness goals so uh, those are our true gems for the for the episode wow um, great episode by the way because <laughs> yeah, we're on it <laughs> yeah <laughs> whose idea was to bring these two people on this episode <laughs> so what's up so let's do some some plugs one, one plug is I want to shout out uh, CrossFit Anadol. Obviously, we're using their space, so we appreciate them using using the space today. Um, my yeah. coach Chris Raleigh of Dallas Strength and Conditioning. Uh, I need to contact him, but he's he was uh, very instrumental in me getting prepared for my powerlifting meets. So he has uh, online uh, programming, which he's helped me with. Sam Nang. Uh, yeah, I definitely want to thank Sam Hardman, owner of CrossFit Anadol. He's been very welcoming of me and Phil. We we came here uh, a few years ago and we're still here. Um, great place to come. If you guys ever want to stop in the CrossFit Anadol, I do coach here a few times uh, out of the week. <laughs> but uh, I, and the thing is cool, you thank your, your coach and most people think that we're coaches, we don't need coaches. Everybody needs a coach. I have business coaches uh, that helps me in my, my business ventures and then I have a coach for bodybuilding as well. My coach is Alexi Forak at Forak Physique. Uh, I've told a lot of people about him about, uh, he's an expert in nutrition and which I am not an expert in, right? I'm an expert more into like the training programs and philosophies and programming. But you know, w whenever you need something in physical fit and f health or fitness, make sure you reach out to somebody where you feel like you're deficient in. And I always thought like I'm very deficient in like learning about nutrition and uh, food, but that should not stop you from pursuing the type of goals that you want. That's why you reach out to those coaches, the, the type of people that you need uh, to kind of help build you to be make sure that you're a complete person, complete athlete, complete person, you know? And then lastly, if you have any questions, shoot either me or Sam Nang a message. Um, follow us on uh, so Instagram, so Positive Filter, 
Positive filter on everything. Instagram, Twitter, the whole nine. And Coach Beast Mode, he has at Sam Nang. Yeah. Man, which I'll put all his contact information in the show notes. The easiest way to find me is if you go to Google and hashtag Coach Beast Mode. So it's my personal hashtag. You have like Instagram, you have mm -hmm. uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube. And I drop different things so people could get different ideas throughout the day and just different media sources. So like a long, like podcasting is a little bit longer. YouTubing is a little bit longer programming and my Instagram stories that I post are more like short actionable items and I think you're starting to do that too with your podcast right yeah slightly yeah. so that was a good episode thank you so much thank you Philip thank yeah. you for this having me yeah the positive filter <laughs> tell everyone the tell po everyone positive filter. if you're gonna tell somebody about something 10x it okay <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and so thank you so much um, we look forward to more collaborations and over and out over and out listening to Positive Filter, a podcast that focuses on friends, family, health, and career with a little self-help along the way. This episode of Positive Filter was edited by Marlo Young Jr., host of Time Well Spent Podcast and creator of Always Big Long Studios. For this episode, I'd like to thank Sam Man, aka Coach Beast Mode, for being a guest and inspiring me to give this podcast a try. As always, I'd like to thank Ryan for the music, Maggie for being an amazing and supportive wife, and all the listeners. If you have any questions for the Positive Filter podcast, please message me or use the hashtag AskPositiveFilter on Twitter. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your family and friends. Spreading positivity is a movement. Thanks for listening.